Today I've got this really nice video on something called the arithmetic geometric mean. So you probably know what the arithmetic mean is, so that's just the average. So you add two numbers and divide by two, or more generally you add n numbers and divide by n. You probably have also heard of the geometric mean. So that's where you take the product of two numbers and take the square root, or you take the product of n numbers and take the nth root. Well, the arithmetic geometric mean is some sort of infinite blending of these two means. So let's see how it's defined first, and then we're gonna prove a little bit of a property with it, which will actually be related to elliptical integrals, which I made a little mini series on the channel about earlier. So let's say we've got two positive numbers, A and B. Then we define two sequences as follows. So A naught is equal to A and B naught is equal to B. And then after that, a n plus 1 is a n plus b n over 2. So it's the arithmetic mean of a n and b n. And then b n plus 1 is the product of a n and b n. And then take the square root. So it's the geometric mean of a n and b n. So the first thing that we'll prove is that the sequence a n and the sequence b n both converge to the same number, which we'll call m of a b, in other words, the arithmetic geometric mean. So this last equality is like a definition. And this proof is a little bit loose because we won't check all of the details. We'll just check that if these do indeed converge, then they converge to this number. But you can check that they converge using standard tricks from maybe a calculus or a real analysis class. I'll leave that to you. Maybe sketch your proof of that in the comments if you'd like. Okay, so let's get to this. So we're gonna start with the limit as n goes to infinity of b sub n, and I'm gonna write that as the limit as n goes to infinity of b sub n plus one, and then I'm gonna multiply by a version of one, and the version of one that I'll multiply is b n plus one over b n, and you might say, well, that's not equal to one, but as n goes to infinity, bn plus 1 and bn approach the same number, so that means their quotient approaches 1. So I really did multiply by 1 in the limit. Okay, so now from here I can write this as the limit as n approaches infinity of bn plus 1 squared over bn. But now if we look at this definition of bn plus 1, notice if we square it and divide by bn, we get exactly an. So this is the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n. So we've just shown that these two sequences, a n and b n, indeed have the same limit. And like I said before, we'll define that limit to be this m a b number, the arithmetic geometric mean. Now next up, we'll show that this arithmetic geometric mean MAB is in fact equal to pi over 2 times IAB, where IAB is the following two-parameter integral. So it's the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of d theta over the square root of a squared cosine squared plus b squared sine squared. Okay, so let's get to it. And the first thing that we'll do is start to analyze this two-parameter integral. So like I said, we have IAB equals this integral from 0 to pi halves of d theta over root a squared cos squared theta plus b squared sine squared theta. And now we're going to make a substitution, and I think this substitution is not exactly, but it's pretty similar to something called the Weierstrass substitution. And all of the parts of the substitution will take quite a bit of room, so I'll do them all in that box over there. So let's set u equal to tangent theta. So notice that that means that u squared plus 1 is the same thing as tangent squared plus 1, but tangent squared is secant squared. So u squared plus 1 is secant squared. But then secant is 1 over cosine. That means that cosine squared theta is equal to 1 over u squared plus 1. So that's a nice translation tool for writing cosine squared in terms of our new variable u. So now let's do something similar for sine squared. 
So if u is equal to tangent, that makes one over u equal to cotangent of theta. And then we can notice that u squared plus one over u squared. That's the same thing as one plus one over u squared. So that's one plus cotangent squared, but that is cosecant squared of theta. Again, by another one of the Pythagorean trig identities. We can take the reciprocal of that and we'll see that sine squared theta is equal to u squared over u squared plus one. And there's our next translation tool. So, so far we've developed translation tools for cosine squared and sine squared. And the only thing left is to make a translation tool for d theta. But in fact, we can already do that using the derivative of tangent as secant squared theta, d theta, but then we can rewrite secant squared as one plus u squared and then d theta. So let's fit that in down here. d theta will be du over u squared plus one. And just to reiterate, that's coming from this du equals secant squared and the fact that secant squared is u squared plus one. Okay, so let's input all of that into our integral. So we have the integral of, well, let's see what happens to the bounds of integration. When theta is zero, tangent of theta is equal to zero. And then when theta is pi over two, well, really as theta approaches pi over two, tangent will approach infinity. And that's pi over two from below, so that's important. And then we'll take our d theta and write it as du over one plus u squared and then we have the square root of, then we'll have a squared times cosine squared plus b squared times sine squared, but that shakes up to be a squared plus b squared u squared over one plus u squared. Just taking those multiples of these two things and then pushing them together. Okay, now we can bring this guy right here inside of the square root. That means we have to square it. That means it'll partially cancel what's happening in the denominator. And we have the integral from zero to infinity of du over the square root of one plus u squared, and then a squared plus b squared u squared. So something like that. And now from here, we're gonna make another change of variables into a new variable, which we'll call x. So let's set x equal to b times u. So that means du is dx over b. And similarly, u is x over b. So that's gonna allow us to write this as one over b, and then we have the integral from zero to infinity of dx over the square root of, so we have one plus u squared, but that's gonna be one plus x squared over b squared. And then we'll have a squared plus b squared times u squared, but that'll be a squared plus x squared. Okay, nice. Now we can take this b inside of the radical, cancel this b squared out and turn that one into a b squared. And that's where we'll start the next board. So this is where we left ourselves off in the last board. We had our integral a, i, b, our two parameter integral is one half the integral from minus infinity to infinity of dx over the square root of x squared plus a squared times x squared plus b squared. So I brought a half out and changed my bounds of integration from zero to infinity to minus infinity to infinity based off of the fact that my function is an even function. Okay, and so now from here, what I would like to do is make another substitution. And along with this substitution, I'm gonna leave a couple of like little homework exercises because they're really just like some symbolic manipulation tricks. Okay, so that substitution will be t equals one half times the quantity x minus a over b times x. Okay, nice. And now from this substitution, we can calculate our dt, and our dt is equal to one half, and then one plus a times b over x squared dx. So that's just from taking our derivative there. But we can rewrite that as something like x squared plus ab over 2x squared dx. 
And so that's our value of dt, if you will. So let's put a box around that. That'll be useful as we move forward. And then two little homework exercises, which are really just symbolic manipulation, will also be useful. And I'll leave those right here. So the first one is to show that t squared plus a plus b over 2 quantity squared is indeed equal to x squared plus a squared times x squared plus b squared over 4x squared. So it's a little monotonous, but not too hard. And then the other thing to check is that t squared plus ab is equal to x squared plus ab quantity squared all over 4x squared. And now from here, we can do kind of our final calculation. And let's start over here with i, a plus b over 2 times, and then square root of a, b. So we've replaced our two parameters. And then use the definition up here. So that's 1 half the integral from minus infinity to infinity of this guy where we replace a with a plus b over 2 and b with a, b. And I'll change my variables too from t to x or from x to t. So I have dt over the square root of t squared plus a plus b over 2 squared and then t squared plus a b. Great. Really it's like plus the square root of a b squared but all that shakes up in the end. Okay now we're ready to make these substitutions based off of these two homework problems and this orange box. So that's going to leave us with 1 half, and then we have the integral from 0 to infinity. It's 0 to infinity because we're changing our variable to x, and notice as t approaches minus infinity, x will approach 0, and then as t approaches infinity, x will approach infinity. That's pretty easy to see from this substitution right here. And now we'll write this version of dt. So we'll have x squared plus ab dx over 2x squared. Okay, then let's make these two substitutions for these two portions right here that are inside of this radical. So we'll have x squared plus a squared times x squared plus b squared over 4x squared. So that's from this term. And then from this t squared plus a b term, we'll have something like x squared plus a b quantity squared over 4x squared. Okay, nice. But now from here, let's notice that we get a lot of cancellation. This thing right here will cancel this thing right here, given that this version is squared and it's within the square root. But then this 4x squared, this 4x squared that are both within the radical will come out and cancel the combination of this 2x squared and this half. So those right there cancel. And then let's see what we're left with. We're left with the integral from 0 to infinity of dx over the square root of x squared plus a squared x squared plus b squared. But notice that's equal to i a b as defined, well, not quite right here, but it's equivalent to this right here using the fact that this is an even function and we're integrating over a symmetric domain. So the important thing to take away from this calculation is that i of this arithmetic mean comma geometric mean is the same thing as i a b and from there we can finish proving this result. Okay so on the last board we saw that i a b was equal to i a plus b over 2 square root of a b but notice that a plus b over 2 is exactly equal to a1 based off of this recursion and square root of a b is exactly equal to b1 based off of this recursion. So we have all of this is equal to a or is equal to i a1 b1. And then we can apply this rule again. So that's gonna give us i of a2 b2 and then so on and so forth. And doing the limiting procedure, the fact that each of these sequences converge to the same thing, which we call the arithmetic geometric mean, we see that this whole thing is equal to i m a b m a b. Great. So let's maybe bring that fact down here. We have IAB is the same thing as IM 
in, where maybe we're just introducing a little bit of simplified notation where we set capital M equal to this arithmetic geometric mean MAB. But now let's go back up to our definition and notice that IMM is the integral from zero to pi halves of d theta over the square root of m squared cosine squared plus m squared sine squared. We can factor that m squared out and we get cosine squared plus sine squared. But the great thing about that is that cosine squared plus sine squared is one. So we end up with one over m times the integral from zero to pi over two of just d theta. But that's pretty clearly gonna give us pi over two times m. Now let's introduce the a, b back in. So let's see what we have. We have i a b, this parameterized integral, is equal to pi over 2 m a b. But we can clearly solve that for m a b and we retrieve this formula which was part of our proposition. Okay, so interestingly enough, there are certain values of the arithmetic geometric mean which are related to something called the Jacobi theta function. I'm thinking that's a good video for the second channel. Post in the comments if you'd like to see that. And if you haven't subscribed yet, now would be a great time to do it. And that's a good place to stop. Music